All right, so today we're talking about economic systems. Uh, first, we need to know some pretty crucial vocabulary. First, uh, you need to know what goods are. Goods are things people make. This baby bottle is a good. Uh, these keys that I have that I'm pulling out right now, these are also goods because they're things people make. All right. Uh, next, we have services. Services are things people do for others. Me filming this video right now for you, dear students, that is a service because I'm doing this in the hopes that you will actually understand these economic systems uh, a little bit better than my students in the past have. Uh, another thing uh, it's really important that will be referred to throughout this video is the means of production or the MOP. Uh, that is the facilities and resources used in making goods. Uh, the factories that make the pencil that you may be writing with right now. Uh, but that also means the resources like the wood that was used to make your pencil or the rubber used in making your eraser. Uh, or if you're writing in pen, uh, the plastic that was used uh, in, in your pen, the pen factory, uh, or whatever dye uh, I guess creates the ink that you're using. Uh, so when you see the MOP throughout the rest of this presentation, don't think I'm talking about a mop because I'm not. I'm talking about the means of production, which is the things used to make all the stuff. Uh, and then finally, we have scarcity. Uh, scarcity simply means that people have unlimited wants. Uh, think about your cell phone. When you get that brand new awesome smartphone, uh, a year down the line, you want something better. Uh, when I say, hey, I'm going to give you guys free candy and you only get one piece, then you want more than one piece. And that means that people have unlimited wants. Unlimited wants. That, that we have an endless uh, wanting of more stuff. However, there's not an infinite or unlimited supply of stuff. So there are limited resources or limited products. So, uh, to talk about economic systems, you need to understand that there are four basic economic questions, fundamental questions, that will be referred to throughout the whole rest of this video. Uh, first, we have question one, which is who owns the means of production, or the MOP? I have two terms here that I don't have space to define on this board, but you need to write them down. Uh, first is what we call private ownership. Private ownership means that individual citizens or groups of citizens own the factory or own the business. So again, private means that it's private citizens, just regular citizens that own the business. Then we also have public. Public means anytime that there is a anything's referred to as public ownership, that means that the government owns it. For example, uh, the school that I work at, that is a public school, meaning that it is controlled and owned by the government. Uh, so that's the first question. Who owns the means of production? Who owns the factories? Who owns the, the resources that's used to make all the stuff that we use? Question two, or Q2, is how should goods be produced? Uh, how, how, who decides what is made, basically, is what that means. Uh, should the goods be made according to who uh, wants them, or should the government decide all that? Question three, or Q3, is how are goods distributed to people? Do people buy the things that they need based on how much money that they have, or does the government decide what stuff you get? And then finally, how involved is the government? I don't feel like writing out government, so it's just G-O-V-T, and that's how you should write it too. Use shorthand whenever possible. All right. So now let's look at the three main systems that we're studying in this course. First, we have free enterprise or capitalism. Uh, that is the system that we use in the United States. Free enterprise and capitalism all mean the same thing. Uh, and to symbolize that, I have a dollar. Yes, a nice $20 bill. Aren't you jealous? Because free enterprise capitalism is all about making that paper. All right. Uh, so the answer to question one here of who owns the means of production is private citizens. Private citizens own the means of production. They run their businesses to make a profit. So the motive for opening a business is to make money, plain and simple. That is who owns the means of production. Question two, uh, supply and demand decides what is produced. So for example, 
Uh, I always like to think of shoes. Uh, if people really like a certain type of shoe, then that would uh, motivate the shoe company to make even more of those shoes. If people don't like a product, uh, then those products aren't made as much anymore and they get sold at places like Ross, Marshalls, and TJ Maxx. Uh, let's look at this diagram right here. You need to write this down. S means supply. So anytime there's an increased supply and a lowered demand, the price of the product lowers. It falls. Uh, over here, this is a little split line, anytime there's a low supply and a high demand, that means that the price of the product goes up. Think about iPhones, for example. Uh, sometimes companies will purposely keep their supplies low so that they can make more money off of those products because they know people really, really want those things. Uh, question three is, again, how are goods distributed to the people? And in capitalism, people buy what they need with their money from their jobs, plain and simple. Uh, the government is not going to tell you, hey, you're going to get uh, this much milk this month. That's not how it works. People buy whatever they need with their money. Uh, and then question four, government involvement. Uh, the government involvement in a capitalist society is the lowest out of the three systems. Uh, really, the government exists to regulate, make sure that businesses are operating safely and within the law. Uh, but if you want to open some crazy business like the left-handed store where you only sell things for left-handed people and the government may think, hey, that's probably going to fail, uh, but they'll still let you open it as long as you have the money and your, your you know, zoning permits and all that stuff. So uh, the government involvement is pretty low in a free market or capitalist society. Some example countries of a free market or free enterprise society are the USA, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. Now let's go to the complete other side of the spectrum, and that is communism. Uh, communism or Marxism. These two can be uh, pretty much used interchangeably. It's called Marxism because uh, Karl Marx, uh, was, uh, he, he came up with this philosophy. Basically, he saw that there were uh, too, too, too many poor people in the world that were being oppressed by rich people. Uh, and he basically devised a system where people would theoretically be equal, uh, where there would be no poverty because everyone would make the same amount of money. Uh, and in communism, uh, the government owns all means of production. That means that you can't start your private business. You can't start your left-handed store. Only the government can do that. Uh, they, they, the government makes the shoes. The government makes the cars. The government uh, drills for oil. The government does everything and you just work for the government. Uh, there are no private businesses allowed in communism. Uh, question two, how should goods be produced? Uh, the government decides what is made. The government decides what is produced. Uh, and they often do this in five-year plans. Oh, I forgot my symbol for uh, communism. And that is this awesome Russian hat. Yes, this is really real from Russia. It's rabbit fur. Poor rabbits. Uh, but this is a common hat that is worn uh, in Russia still. And Russia, formerly known as the Soviet Union, was the most powerful communist country uh, in, in the world at one time. Uh, let's get to question three which is how are goods distributed to the people. In Soviet Russia, uh, the government decides what people get. Uh, same thing in, in North Korea today, which is uh, really the, a, the most prominent uh, communist country uh, that there is right now. The government decides what size house you live in. The government decides how much food you get. They pretty much decide everything for you. Uh, question four, how involved is the government? The government completely controls everything, so it's total government involvement. Example countries that exist today that are still communist are North Korea and Cuba. I didn't put the Soviet Union on there because they don't exist anymore, uh, but just know that uh, the Soviet Union was a very powerful communist country until the early 90s. And then finally, we have Good socialism. Good morning, Mesquite High School. Please come by if you have a 1A class and pick up your report cards. Go pick up your report cards. Center. Those all need to be passed out 1A today. So come on down to the counseling center if you have a 1A class. Thanks. No, thank you. All right. Uh, so, socialism. Uh, I already wrote the, the example countries up here because I didn't feel like writing them down below. Uh, but the example countries are Israel and Sweden that are socialist. Uh, and really, my, uh, my example 
item here for socialism is a level. Okay, you use a level normally to figure out if your pictures are, are hanging straight on your wall, but in this example, uh, we're going to use it like this. So if this is capitalism and this is communism, socialism would be right about here in the middle. It is a mix, really, of capitalism and communism. All right. Uh, in socialism, private ownership is only for small shops and businesses. That's question one, our means of production. That means if you want to open up your left-handed store, you can do that. You can open up a shoe store. You can open up a clothes shop. Uh, you can open up small businesses. However, the government or the, the public ownership in a socialist system, they own the major industries like the banks, the railroads, uh, the electricity companies, the hospitals. They own all the major industries. Uh, and that is, that is to basically their aim for that is to give equal uh, access for people to all of these major industries. Uh, question two, how are things uh, how, how are goods produced? Uh, in a socialist system, the government makes the major economic decisions like how much electricity to produce uh, or where to drill for oil uh, or interest rates as far as banks go. Uh, but people can make small decisions like, again, opening up a business or producing more shoes if these shoes are light or producing more clothes or whatever. Uh, question three, uh, how are goods distributed? In a socialist society, you get free, quote unquote, because nothing is ever free, uh, healthcare, schooling, other services from the government. Remember, nothing is ever really free. Uh, tax money goes towards paying for uh, those services. Just like in this country, uh, the, the school that you attend, your public school, is not really free because your parents pay taxes that fund the, the schooling. Uh, so, but in a socialist society, they get a lot of free things. Uh, and then also people buy goods with their own money from, from their jobs. So if they want to go out and buy you know, 50 cases of apples, then they can do that if they have the money. So the government doesn't really decide what individual like goods you get and they don't really decide where you live either. So it is kind of a mix between capitalism and communism. And then finally, uh, the level of government involvement is medium. Again, the government is involved in major industries but uh, little everyday small businesses are not really affected so much.